welcome to praise the Lord salsa style. Joining us tonight are Tom Flores, pastor of the Rock Church in Riverside, California. Well, hey, if you just joined us, man, I'm telling you, the fire of God is already in this place. You can sense it, you can feel it. There's miracle working faith happening right now in Jesus' name. Well, hey, our next guest flows in that vein. I'm telling you, he is the senior pastor of the Rock Church in Riverside, one of the fastest growing churches in that community. And I'm telling you, in just a sh short years, of four years, that church has grown from zero to a thousand people. And it's because they are actually seeing miracles. Literally people coming out of wheelchairs, blind eyes being open, and this man of God is amazing. So let's give a big God bless you to my friend, Pastor Tom Floyd. God bless you, my man. God bless you. So glad you're here. Ooh, glad to be here. Amen. Wow. We're just, God is so good. Thank you so much for inviting me today. Absolutely. Pastor, you know, I, I talk to you often, and uh, you're always sharing about all these miracles that are happening, mm -hmm. and, and you're kind of right there in that hub where, you know, in some sense, there's some areas that really need a the wind of God, there's some areas that yes, need the amen. hand of God, and then there's just some areas that God places us in that really need to know the miracles of God. Amen. And God has placed you there. Talk to us a little bit about some of the things that are happening at the Rock Church and, wow. and all the miracles that are taking well, praise place. Praise God. We just, you know, we give God the glory. He Absolutely. is the God, one to get all the glory. And, you know, you said it uh, once in one of your services at a conference I went to, and he said, you know, the Church of the Living God needs a Pentecost experience once yeah, again. Yeah. And we're just seeing God do some mighty things here yeah. in the house. And uh, we're seeing God do some, just some mighty powerful things. And, you know, I just, I just found myself years ago, the Lord spoke to me, and I said, Lord, I, wanna, I, I just want to see you get the glory, see you glorified, see your power manifest, because the people need to see. And God called me and told, um, spoke to me and said, you know, I'm called you to be a gospel preacher. And, mm. and, and, you know, the fact is, is I'm not a healing evangelist. I'm not a miracle worker. I'm a gospel preacher. Yeah. And signs follow the gospel preach. Yeah. Amen. Yeah, I love that. So, you know, in our church, you know, we, we lay hands on people, but not, most of the time we, we don't have services where we lay hands on people. Most of the time we just pray for the people, and you'll see God do miracles. As a matter of fact, we have a, someone in the audience today that uh, had a major stroke. I mean, she was a, a stroke victim. Uh, laying in the bed, uh, unresponsive, and we just believed God for a miracle. And today she's completely delivered, completely healed. The power of God just hit her. And in another situation, we had a, one gentleman, was, uh, he, he was a stroke victim as well, came to church, had a stuttering, really left him with a stuttering problem, uh, um, a severe stuttering problem. Came to church. Uh, we had a communion service, and in that communion service, I shared that this is just a trigger of your faith. We're going to believe God for a miracle. If you're here today, we're going to believe God for miracles. By his stripes, you are healed. He took communion. He went home that evening and began, uh, he shared with us the next, next time we saw him that he went home, had the greatest sleep, uh, the best sleep he's ever had, wow. woke up the next day, completely healed, completely delivered, got on the stage and shared his testimony in perfect speech. And God gets the glory. Amen. <laughs> Yeah. Woo, just wow. the power of God. We've seen uh, blind, uh, uh, excuse me, uh, deaf ears open right in the middle of the service. God just healing people. And so we just sit, sit back and just, you know what? I, I told my church a long time ago, we're going to build a, a, a church where God gets the glory. And the only senior pastor they know is Jesus Christ. Amen. Yeah, so good, man. You know, I believe that, I, I believe that God is raising up a generation like you that, that, is bringing back Pentecost, back to the church. And Amen. kind of the pendulum has swung back and forth, but it always ends up right in the middle. Amen. But I really believe that, that, that what's happening, man, is that God is raising up anointed men just like you that has the voice and the faith to believe. And oftentimes, our faith doesn't come by just hearing the word, but it's also experiencing the word Amen. by the pain of our past. Absolutely. And you've had... You've seen your brother murdered in the streets. You yeah. have seen, you know, your family torn apart. I mean, you've seen some some incredible things, and and yet, 
your God encounter changed your life. Amen. Tell us a little bit about that because then people are going to get a real understanding of where this miracle power and this faith comes from. Amen. You know, uh, when I, uh, I was a young boy, 12 years old, is when everything really started uh, um, falling apart in my life. My father died when I was 12 years old. Mm. Went, went right into just getting involved in drugs and dealing drugs and in the streets. You know, my mother was ended up as a single mom with, with four boys and just out of control. And uh, my brother, uh, just a while later, a few years later, my brother's murdered in the streets. An innocent bystander, had nothing to do with gangs, just got caught in the crossfire and got killed. And from then on, it, I was just this, this anger and this bitterness began to build up inside of me. Uh, and uh, so, you know, eventually at, during that time, I didn't have any direction. I thought, you know, drugs was the way to go. It got me out of reality. And it wasn't until someone came to me in a, in a high school and they and, and shared the gospel of Jesus with me. And, and, and I didn't want to have anything to do with that at first because I didn't know anything much, too much about it. And it was interesting that my mother got, received a flyer at a parade and she got invited to a church and it happened to be the same church that this person was sharing the gospel with me. So I ended up going to church one day. My mother kept asking me every single day. She said every time she would go to church, she would say, you know, do you want to go with me? Do you want to go with me? And every time I would just refuse and say no way. And finally, one day, it was like the last time she was going to ask me. She wouldn't press it on me. She wouldn't push it on me. She'd just invite me. Mm. Because one thing I learned a long time ago, that only Jesus can open blind eyes. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. And so she could have pushed it on me. She could have tried to convince me. But the truth is, is only Jesus can open blind eyes. And so one day, as she put her hand on that doorknob, and she looked over at me, and she said, uh, Tom... Uh, do you want to go to church with me? And, I, and all of a sudden, something hit me. The power of God hit me. I didn't know what it was at the, at the time, but I heard a voice in my head and in my heart, and it said, you know, you've tried everything out. Taste me. Try me. See what I can do in your life. And I got up. I said, Mom, I'm going with you. I went to the church. It was just a small uh, adobe building. Uh, God was moving in there, and the, 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 the pastor gave an altar call. He said uh, and I remember when he gave that altar call at first, I, I wasn't sure what I, what I was going to do. And, and I kind of wanted to, but then he spoke these words and he says, you've tried everything else. Give me a try. Wow. And, and that's wow. exactly what the Lord wow. told me in my house. You've tried everything else. Taste me. Try wow. me. And I just, I remember running to the altar. I'm so glad they didn't have crazy ushers at that church because they would have attacked me because I ran to that altar. I hit my knees. I cried out to God. And, and I remember the next day I woke up and God did a miracle. I mean, he set me free from drugs. He set me free from addictions. Mm. I mean, completely Praise transformed God. my Come life. On. The very next day, I had to go back to school. And I remember I went to school. I was 17 years old. I went back to school the next day. And we sat in a big circle at the bus stop. And everyone kept asking each other, you know, what did you do this weekend? And what did you this, do this weekend? And, and I sat there. And at first, I was a little intimidated. I wasn't sure what I was going to say because they're all my old homeboys and my old party friends. And... But when they came to me and they looked at me and they said, what did you do this weekend? All of a sudden, a fire just built up inside. And I just looked at them. I said, you know what? This weekend, I gave my life to Jesus. And you should give your life to yeah. Jesus, too. Come on. And uh, immediately, I just had to make a decision. You know, I, either I was going to be a, a, a submarine Christian or a battleship Christian. Either I was going to stay in the sidelines or go for it all. And so I went and I figured, you know what? I was a drug pusher. I might as well now be a hope pusher. Amen. Yeah. And so yeah, he yeah. set me free. And it was within just a few months after that, I just began to preach the gospel. Uh, my, my pastor was so encouraging on sharing, having us share the gospel. And uh, I believe by the time I was 19, I got saved at 17. By 19, I had already started pioneering my first church, got sent out. Uh, mm. So at a young age, God began to do some supernatural mm. things. But then... We started seeing, I started seeing God do miracles. Mm. Little by little, I remember the first miracle I saw, was at, it was at a Stater Brothers parking lot. And I'll never forget that story. It just changed my life forever. I was coming out of Stater Brothers, and there was a, a little yellow Volkswagen. And I'd never seen anything quite uh, a supernatural thing happen. And God, I just stopped the Lord telling me, go talk to that gentleman in that Volkswagen bug. So I went over to that, that Volkswagen bug, and I walked up to him. And I shared, I invited him to church, and he looks at me and he says, I I'm sorry. I gave him a flower, and he said, sir, I can't read this. I'm blind. Mm. And uh, he kind of had a hazy look in his eyes, and, and all of a sudden, God just said, pray for him. Mm. And so I just looked at him. I said, well, I have a, I have a, 
an answer for you. His name is Jesus. Would you like me to pray for you? And I laid hands on him. Here's this, you know, 18-year-old kid. I've got long hair all the way down to here. I'm an old hippie rocker, and I'm sitting there, and I lay hands on this gentleman, and all of a sudden, I take my hands off, and, and, and I say, read the flyer, and he looks at the flyer, and he looks at me, and he looks back at the flyer, looks at me, and he says, I can see. Wow. And I sat there. Wow. And, 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 I, and I tell you, I was so surprised. I even looked at him and said, really? Are you sure? You know, I had to question it. And he jumps out of the Volkswagen uh, bug, and he starts running around the Volkswagen bug, completely healed. His whole family comes out, sees Grandpa running around, this long hippie guy. You know, they thought I was robbing him or something, yeah. you know? But, you know, the miracle of that was not that his eyes were open, but that the next Sunday, his entire family saw the power of God, came to church, Come and gave on. their life to Jesus. Yes. Amen. Come on. And from that point on, we just started seeing miracle after miracle after miracle, supernatural power of God. Kind of reminds me of Mark chapter 2, man. You know, they bring in this, this, this sick man through the door. They can't get him through the door. They have to bring him through the roof. Amen. And Jesus looks at him and says, your sins are forgiven. People got upset. And he goes, oh, well, so if you don't believe that I can actually do it, mm. that he was perceiving the minds of the people, Amen. he says, well, take up your mat and walk. And all of a sudden... He took, up his mat as wa- he took up his mat and walked, and the entire household changed. Amen. They were like, this is the Messiah. This is the Amen. one that was sent. Well, what else do we have to do? Isn't it amazing that miracles opened the door wider for Amen. families and friends to get saved? Amen. Amen. That's what Jesus did. Absolutely. What did Jesus do? He went around and he healed them all. Amen. Yeah. Because, you know, the fact is, is it's the goodness of God that leads man to repentance. Yes. It's when God shows his goodness by yes. touching lives and healing people. And I believe that when we begin to step into that realm of allowing God to be God. Yeah. Amen. Allowing God to do what he does best. Mm. And allowing, you know, my God is a showing off kind of God. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. He loves to show off and he's waiting for a vessel that'll say, go for it, Lord. Do what you need to do and, and allow God to be God in their life. And, you know, it's, it's, it's like it, it, people are looking for the power of God. They're, you know, it, you know, I, I, know, I know it's a cliche that, that we often say as pastors and preachers. But I think behind that, people that are looking for the power of God, they're really actually looking for the evidence yes. of God. You know, the Bible says now faith is a substance of things hoped for, the evidence, the evidence. of things not seen. Amen. And what the Spirit of God is doing in your life, in your church, in your ministry, is that you are building faith and God is bringing the evidence. That's what real miracles are all about. It's about the evidence of someone's faith believing that God wants to. What has God placed in your heart right now? Like, What is God saying to you? One of the things that God has been really pressuring on me and pushing on me in this area is one of the things that keeps people from fulfilling their destiny in Christ Jesus. Mm. You know, one of the things that we, we uh, I, I realize as a young person that the grace of God and the power of God in my life. Mm. And if we can get to a place where we can embrace the grace, mm. yeah, like if we that. can embrace, embrace his grace, grace yeah. then we can step in and fulfill our place. Yeah, I like that. See, a person can't find their place if, unless, until they have embraced his grace. Yeah, good. You know, Jesus said in his word, he said uh, in, 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 uh, in, uh, in the Gospels, he said, you are the light of the world. He didn't say you're going to become the light of the world. He didn't say you, you're going to be the salt of the earth uh, or you're going to be. He said, you are. Mm-hmm. And we have to embrace his grace so that we can embrace our place. Yeah, beautiful. See, say if, that we one can more embra- time. if we can embrace his grace, yes. we can then embrace our place. And what does Paul say? Fantastic. Paul says in Corinthians, he says, we don't run, because here, here's how it goes. With, is I embrace his grace, which allows me to embrace my place so I can finish the race. Amen? Wow. You sound like a rapper. If I can't finish, if I don't embrace, see, one of the, one of the greatest enemies of the, uh, greatest weapons of the enemy is not temptation. It's not sin. It's discouragement. Discouragement. If the enemy can discourage you, he, he has you. Yeah. But see, as a young disciple, I learned how to embrace that grace. So even though I might have had setbacks in my life, and we have all had them, yeah, all even had though them. I've had some issues and things I had to deal with, but because I held on to his grace, mm-hmm. I was able to embrace my place mm. in his kingdom and go forward and fulfill 
my destiny in God. Mm. And that's what Jesus tells us all the time. You are. The you are's in the Bible tell us so much. You are the light of the earth. You are the salt Minister, of the earth. Man. You are a yeah. new creation. Yeah. You know, we will say this all the time. You know, I'm an old sinner saved by grace. Mm. You know, I've heard that so many times. It was a cliche in the church. Oh, old sinner saved by grace. But I learned a long time ago, I'm not an old sinner saved by grace. I'm a new creation in Christ Jesus. Yeah. Amen? Yeah, good. See, I, I'm not an old sinner saved by grace. See, nowhere in the New Testament, nowhere in the Word of God does God ever refer to you as an old sinner saved by grace. He says, you are a new creation in Christ. You, you are a royal priesthood. You are a peculiar people. You yeah, are my beautiful. own special people. Yes. And when we embrace yes. that and we begin to say, I am yes. a child of God. Yes. When I can say, when God says, you are more than a conqueror. Mm. You are. Greater is he that is in you. Mm. And the you are's and the I am in the Bible that God can build us up so that we can find our place. So we're not running with uncertainty, as Paul mm. says, but I'm running with endurance. Mm. Mm. And the only way I can run with endurance is by knowing my place. Mm. And by that, I can, when I embrace his grace, he allows me to know my place. You know, you hit on something so powerful, and that is the devil's greatest weapon is not temptation, but it's discouragement. You know, the word courage means the will to fight. Yes. And the prefix for dis, D-I-S, it's a prefix. It means without. Mm. Disconnected means without a connection. Mm. Discouragement means without the will to fight. Yes. That's what it means. You know, Tom, there's an anointing on you right now for breakthrough. And there's a lot of people out there mm. that are discouraged. They don't have the will to fight right now. Mm -hmm. Would you look in that camera? Would you pray for people Absolutely. and encourage them Amen. to get rid of that discouragement in Jesus' name? Amen. You know, as we I just want to encourage you today uh, on, on the camera, on, t on watching right now. If you're watching right now, I want to encourage you. You know, a lot of times we say, we read in the Word of God, and we've heard the scripture from Jesus, and he'll say, you know, if you have faith as a grain of mustard seed. Mm. And we think about this mustard seed, and many times we think of it as a small faith. I, I only need small faith. But yet Jesus turns around, and, and his disciples are in a boat, and there's the wind and the waves, and they're, and they're afraid, and they go and they wake up the master, and he says to them, oh, you of little faith. So it almost brings a little bit of a challenge there. Is it, is it big faith or little faith? Because you told me, Lord, that if I have a faith as a grain of mustard seed, I can tell this mulberry tree to, to be uprooted and obey me. But then he tells his disciples, oh, you of little faith. Why could you not believe? And one thing I learned is that word little faith, the word little in, in the Greek actually means a short-lived faith. That it's not necessarily the size of your faith, but the longevity of your faith. See, that if you have enough faith to endure between the amen and the hallelujah of your prayer life, that's when God begins to do something Minister. in your life. Minister, amen. pray right now. Father, I ask in Jesus' name that these that are listening today, watching by television, that, Lord, I ask that, Lord, that you begin to do a new thing in them. Yes, God. Lord, as your word begins to come alive, as, as Pastor Obed said, you know, faith doesn't, doesn't grow by hearing the word. Faith comes by hearing yes. the word. But that faith that comes by hearing the word, according to Romans, is salvation faith. Mm -hmm. But growing our faith, only grow, it only grows when we exercise our faith. Mm -hmm. And so, Lord, I ask in Jesus' name that you'll put us in positions and opportunities so that we can learn to grow our faith, that we can go forward in that which you've called us to do. And I encourage you today, watching by, by television, that God sees you. And he loves you where you're at. Beautiful. You are his child. You are his daughter. Mm. And he cares about you. And I want to encourage you to embrace that grace yes, in your God. life. Embrace who he did, what he did on that cross for you. So that you can embrace the place he's in put Jesus you in. Name. So that you can finish your race. Amen. Amen. God bless you, my man. That was awesome, man. God Tom Florin, man. Amen. I love you, man of God. Thank bless you. Bless you. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Embrace the grace for your place. Look at that, man. Listen, if you're discouraged, I want you to know that we serve a God that wants to encourage you today in Jesus' name.